Some people believe that landscape photographers are solitary creatures that prefer their own company and there may be some truth in that but when photographers work together they can sometimes accomplish great things and enjoy a few chuckles along the way. Found what looks like to be the composition in this white bleak landscape. We're at 150 yards that way but it's off piste so I need you to trail a blaze with, off piste Peace? off the path oh. I need you to trail a blaze with your snowshoes trail a blaze trail. <laughs> trail a blaze. blaze a trail blaze a trail with your snowshoes and I, from the from the path it's about 50 feet is it worth it it look I, I, can't, I haven't been there but I can it looks like it's worth it is it just a picture of a tree <laughs> no <laughs> is it a birch tree in, no. in fog no, it's, you'll have to come and see for yourself. It's All not right. far, and it's worth it. All right. But we'll have to shoot it together because I can't get to it without you guys. Let's do it. And so begins the farcical journey in the snow. Oh. <laughs> I, I nearly got skewered <laughs> in the unmentionable purchase. I can't get any purchase. <laughs> we haven't even had a beer yet. <laughs> I would help, but it's more effort for us to go back down. God. Oh, guys, it's going to be dark before we get to this composition. Oh, there's nothing worse than having to bend over to tie your snowshoes when you can't even breathe. <laughs> yeah. You don't have this problem. All the air just yeah. like leaves it's your body. It's terrible. It's like asphyxiation by shoelace. Can you get out? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I've given up and I'm just lying down. I could just, you just help me. Oh yeah, who needs snow shoes <laughs> At this point, Gibbs has finally started to take a little bit of interest in what we're up to. And you can see the exact moment right here where he decides, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and see what these guys are they're doing. Maybe they've got a nice composition. I'm just gonna lumber over and check out and then bosh, he <laughs> face plants. <laughs> Oh god, that was the best thing I've ever seen! Oh god! Oh. I believe that Uncle Grumpy is actually a comic genius and I just hope he still remembers me when he gets his movie deal with Warner Brothers or whatever and he's rich and famous. Well, Tom's idea paid off. He made us hike all the way through here, been as bushwhack or trays of blail. Trays of blail, blail of trays. <laughs> blail of trays. Uh, through all this snow with our snowshoes, but it was totally worth the hike because this is absolutely juicy. I think it's, it's, it's so good even that I think Adam may even Get his camera out. Is it good? In, is it good enough? <laughs> I'll take a picture. Are you eating snow? You're thirsty. Let me get another shot of that. Mermaid. How's it taste? Oh, it's lovely. Like a popsicle. Mm. Just what I need on this hard trail that we've blazed. Did you check if there was any yellow snow? Yeah. Lemon flavour. Try this. Oh, there it is. Bow Lake. The scene really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I just came here because these morons dragged me up here. Well, we made it through this, what would you say, five feet of snow with our snowshoes. Yeah. There's the snowshoes there. Two yeah. at most. <laughs> I've got to give him credit. This was Heaton's idea. And I reckon it was just because he wanted to uh, watch us flounder in the snow, which we did. And Gibbs managed to do an absolutely exquisite face plant, which I did catch on camera. And I'm going to repeat over and over again and sync it to the beat of the music. <laughs> yeah, Nick used this really good term, something like uh, boundary patrol or something like that. And basically, it's, it's watching your footsteps because once you move into the scene to investigate, oh, where's my comp? Well, you've now made it impossible to move further back and shoot a wider scene. So we've, we've been very, very careful about not ruining the scene. And I think we've got this perfect little platform and it's just, it's just stunning how all this thick, heavy snow is weighing down these branches, these gorgeous leading lines and that light, nice light on the peak there. So this is, this is very promising, but it's so good. I reckon if we don't get good light, I think we should come back tomorrow. 
Well, we've blazed the trail. We've blazed it. We've traced the blail. Traced the blail. So we might as well uh, come back multiple times till we get perfect light. Okay, what I love about this shot is I love this curve that comes in from the bottom right there and of course all of this heavy snow on these trees making the branches sag and like this foreground interest where you've got this river that comes in it cracks it's carved through the snow and you've got the snow that's kind of broken off and of course Anybody the peak there so we just need a bit of light to come in and light the mountain from the side it's a lovely comp but we just need that light now if it's not if we don't get that today i think we're all in agreement we might well come back tomorrow it's so gorgeous so what's your favorite lens Probably 16 to 35. Oh yeah? It's, a, I, it's I either agree. 16 to 35 or 100 to 400. Nothing in between. Oh really? Oh, that's interesting. I like the 24 to 105 if you had to just have crap. one. It's crap. <laughs> it's crap. If you had to just have any focal length. But I think 16 to 35 is as close as you can get to what you see with your, your eyes. Mm -hmm. Like what you see with your eyes, if you want to get that comp, you can get it with a 16 to 35. The thing I don't like about like 24 to 105 or like 24 to 70 is like all of those medium focal ranges, like you know 50 millimeters, 35, are boring. I think, like because it's so similar to what you see every day that it's like. To me, that's the challenge, though. See, I used to I used to think like that, but then you see everyone shooting with these 16 or even 40 mil yeah. lenses. It's all this super distortion. It looks really impressive, but then everyone's got the same stuff. And I think it takes a lot more effort and ingenuity to compose at much longer focal length and not, like you said, not get boring. Yeah. It's, and then when you do get them, holy shit, they're amazing. Well, that's why I like the 100 and 400 is like, I feel like I get, I get my big, you know, epic landscapes with wide angle, but I get my most original stuff with 100 and 400. Oh, that's it's, stuff you got yesterday was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> no? Oh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, the cool thing about 100 to 400 is you can you can do landscapes, you know, you can just the mountain peaks and stuff, but you can also do the little details with it. Yeah. Hmm. Right? Especially. What about going through for wise like 10 mil or something? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Because you can really just sort of foreground them. <laughs> no. It's true. As it tastes. It's 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 <laughs> Why was that out of frame? Well, my favourite lens is a 24 to 120. 24 to 120? Yeah. What's that, a Nikon? Yeah, it's not a very good lens. It's my favourite lens. The focal length, you know. I think it depends where you are as to what, what you know, if someone said you can only take one lens, I always say, well, where am I? Mm -hmm. So, I'm on the beach, totally. I want the 16 to 35 in the mountains. 70 to 200. Yeah, and that's probably why I say 16 to 35. Let's shoot some seascapes. Yeah. So, like, I'm eight. sorry. <laughs> what was that? You know that absolutely killer frozen wave shot that I love that uh, you got? What was that? That was 70 to 300. What 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 were you at at that? At that? Probably like 250. Yeah. Millimeter. I love that shot. I, I, I was so inspired by that shot. I thought, I have to go there and I have to buy a big lens. Or I could just borrow yours. Yeah. <laughs> just borrow mine. But that's the thing about telephoto is that like the further you zoom in on something, the less likely you are to be recreating somebody else's photo or somebody else's the less likely to recreate your own. It's, it's always, more unique. Yeah. That's a good point. I didn't think of that actually. I always feel like my telephoto shots are always my more original ones. Yeah. But they're also the most difficult too sometimes because it's hard to get a sense of three dimensionality. Like you have a mountain peak, you zoom in on it, it's just like flat. Yeah. yeah. It's, well, I think you've definitely talked me into it. I will let you lend me your lens. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Deal. Uh, how come you're not flying the, the drone? Dude. Can't fly a drone in uh, National Park, oh, people. Yes. Yeah. Adam Sorry. Gibbs is all about the rules. Yeah. You've got to be very strict about that. Yeah. That was a great image you showed me the other day of uh, 
No sé, Juana. La, 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 la. <laughs> Very strict. Okay, well, we didn't quite get the epic light that we were hoping for, but it wasn't a total dead loss. And I had kind of low expectations when we got here because the light was totally flat anyway. But I think if you can hike in somewhere and discover a new composition that works for one, two, three, four, four photographers in a row, well, that's, that's a good day, even if you didn't get the light because there's always tomorrow. So I reckon we're gonna head back, get some breakfast and some coffee, and then head out to our shoot this afternoon. And maybe we'll see this place again. <laughs> Have you ever seen such grace? <laughs> Ta-da! There's a composition over there, quick! 